You're in the right place at the right time. Absolutely, you're on the moral compass. Listen, between Hardrick Porsche and myself, today is the very esteemed Coach John Good, man. Listen, we got all kinds of celebrities popping out the woodwork today with us, man. We got Coach Good, and we'll give Coach Good in this. That's right. That's how we can start it off tonight. We can start it off tonight. And, for, and we're going to go ahead and hit the promo video when we come back. We'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and we're going to break down this Super Bowl Funky 55. You are at the after party. That's right. You're in the right place at the right time. You're on. We're on. You're on. You're watching the Moral Compass. We've got the very esteemed Coach John Gooden with us here tonight. Our first coach. 
got old HP over there on the side. He's already smirking. Coach, I ain't going to let him talk first. He's smirking because, you know, I had to put that conspiracy thing in there for him. <laughs> you know, the grassy knoll and the magic bullet and all kind of stuff. From Sunday, you know? So we're going to get to the bottom of that. But just first of all, let you guys know, man, since we were in elementary school, uh, like Hodrick was saying, this was our first coach. Uh, my memory, I remember I used to be the slowest one uh, trailing behind the rest of the guys. Coach used to keep this stick with him for motivation. So I used to always get motivated. Coach put that stick on me, and I, I have to speed up a little bit because I wasn't really running. I was just moving my feet. But we're glad to have Coach with us tonight. Hodrick, you said you had a memory of Coach? Yeah, I, I remember uh, we were playing uh, like dodgeball, right? And uh, Coach Gooden said, whatever you do, do not hit anyone in the head, right? And about two, three minutes later, guess what happened? Uh, I ended up throwing the ball, and I hit uh, DeJaris Harris in the head with the ball. <laughs> I said, uh-oh. <laughs> so uh, we know what happened. As soon as we got done with the period, I got introduced to that stick. And that's uh, something I will always remember. <laughs> it was good, hard, tough love. Yeah, I appreciate it, Coach Good. Yeah, we love you, Coach Good. Coach Good, how you doing tonight, man? I'm, I'm, I'm doing great. And Hodred, see, when we were playing dodgeball at that time, you throw the ball underhand. So we we're teaching how to throw underhand as well as overhand. But you guys, <laughs> a little hard headed at times. <laughs> <laughs> then you get out there you get mad to certain people inside the middle. <laughs> <laughs> why are you trying to give the Jarrett a concussion, man? Come on, hey. man. You're trying to give him a concussion. <laughs> The Jarrett, if you're watching this show, you can see Hodrick right now. He got plenty of money. He used to be a drill sergeant. In case you miss some memory lapse or something like that, Audrey hitting the Jarvis in the head. You ain't no good, Audrey. <laughs> well, yeah, we had tonight. We're going to talk about this Super Bowl, man. I see somebody already chiming in, Coach. I'm going to pull them up, see what this is. Junior Duncan. <laughs> All right. All right. Junior Duncan said, Coach, I need some saltwater fish. How you know about that, man? <laughs> that's, that's what Junior Duncan said. Say yeah, yeah well, water what fish. Happened, me and Junior used to fish fresh water quite regular. Yeah, yeah, but oh. now I, I I put uh fresh water aside. I get hooked on salt water, catching whitings, sharks. You catch anything out there in fresh water, so I got hooked on that. And I haven't put my boat in the water, I guess, in about three about three years now. Okay, all right, all right, okay. And coach, guess what? We got Tommy Harris uh chiming Johnny. in. <laughs> Old Tommy Harris said coach hasn't changed a bit. Old Tommy Harris. <laughs> hey, that's my short stop. Leave my that's my short stop. Tommy yeah. Harris, your short stop. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, remember that. <laughs> hey, Junior Doctor, remember when we used to beat up on them cubs? <laughs> Especially that so-called fastball he yeah. had. Yeah. Coach Junior said you can't hide from him, Coach. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen Junior in quite at least about a year now, you know, unless he saw me, you know. <laughs> and we couldn't go to the football game that much this year, so therefore you missed out on a whole lot of people this year. But this yes, sir. Yeah, this, this pandemic is something else. Yes. This pandemic is absolutely something else, man, but... Thank God that we can reach out and we can uh, connect visually like we are now because we, we're having fun now. Coach, we're going to start off with you. And we're going to start off with the Bucks and what the Bucks did right Sunday. You know, before we get into the beat of it. You see the little smirk, Hodrick already <laughs> making? He already ready to say something, you know? No, <laughs> hey, no. you're not a fan, are you? <laughs> hey, yeah. Hey, Coach, listen. Junior Duncan said, I told you not to put Hardy on your podcast. He yeah. said that every time Hardy is on it. Hey, Coach, Coach, he's still hating now. Coach, Junior Duncan been hating since uh, we used to run all over him in Little League football. You still, listen, listen. Man, 48 years to tell old, people Coach, Hardy. Hating. Coach ain't come on here, dog. Coach ain't come on here. Coach came on here for the show. You yeah. telling on Junior. <laughs> you telling on Junior. Coach, <laughs> Junior got to hate. <laughs> Junior was a good linebacker on JV and varsity now. All right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I, don't don't know about, I don't know about a little league, but when he got to. Yeah, he got, he got better as time went by. He got better. 
Okay, so y'all, yeah. y'all, y'all got them right, huh? Yeah, we got them right. <laughs> okay. Not me, coach, because I, you know, I he was tired of me running all over him, so he had to get better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Judy go talk trash about <laughs> yeah. that, coach. I, I want to <laughs> ask you about uh, Super Bowl Fifty Five. Um, uh, did it? Uh, what did what did the Bucks do right Sunday? Uh, I tell you what, personally, I think they had a good game plan, and looked like everything clicked. You know, I think uh, they sacked uh, Brady what once or twice. But they after, got time. yeah, yeah. But after, if you you really look at it, a lot of people don't realize winning games depends on how they execute in that trench. You know, I'm talking about the offensive line and defensive line. And if that offensive line can block, keep that defensive line out, that give Brady enough time to throw passes and complete passes. And then if you look at the defense that the uh, the Bucks had, I mean, they manhandled Kansas City offense. So it was that offensive line and defensive line that really set the tempo. Because if you don't have anyone to block and keep them out, that quarterback ain't going to have time to throw that ball. Or the running back, passing off to the running back. Can't open up the hole because you can't handle the defensive lineman. And I think uh, uh, I think it was the defensive line and offensive line for the Tampa Bay that, that, that did the job. All right. Thank you, Coach. And, Coach, before we go on, Hodrick, uh, to, um, uh, Junior said when you were talking about him uh, playing baseball, Junior says, all lies, Hardy. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> okay. It's, HP. HP. X Men 15 and 1 is a lie. <laughs> coach, you see him? Yeah. I can't keep him straight, Coach. He's the drill sergeant, too. He's the drill Ask sergeant. Tommy Harris. He can tell you, too. <laughs> <laughs> that was good days, so, so HP, HP. Oh yeah. When you yeah. looked at the game last week, when we talked, we talked about we mentioned um, that the Bucks would have to play near perfect. So um, on defense, you remember I was saying the same thing too. What did yeah. you see the Bucks do right on Sunday? Um. Well, like I said, they dominated the line of scrimmage. I mean, that was the key to me. Whoever dominated the line of scrimmage is going to win. And they dominated the whole game. And uh, they took they took away uh, uh, Tyreek Hill. I mean, I guess that was their main game plan to take away. Because as we knew, as excuse me, as we know, last time they played, he had 200 yards plus in the first quarter. Yeah. And they couldn't allow that this game. So they took that away, which was good. And uh, simply, Tom Bowles out coach Andy Reid playing playing his day. He got out coach, and uh, somehow Andy didn't make his adjustments. I mean, I expected more from out of Andy Reid. I mean, I don't know what happened. Hopefully, like I said the last time on the show, that if Tampa Bay wins, it might be rigged. I wouldn't say it was rigged. I wouldn't say it was rigged. But, you know, seemed like Kansas City to me, Andy Reid didn't have his team prepared. You know, so great job by Tampa Bay. They made their adjustments. They won the line of scrimmage. They won the Super Bowl. So, how did you agree with me? The guys in the trenches, huh? Yes, sir. That offense and defensive line. Absolutely. And and, and we, we talked about that last time. Hardy, Junior's not saying this about what you just said. He said this about that baseball. I know he's still talking about <laughs> baseball. Junior <laughs> said, why has he tried to big himself up? Stick to something you know, Hardy. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> you, <Junior. laughs> you know you gotta hate. <laughs> See, coach, 48, 48 plus years still going on. <laughs> and I, I agree. I agree with that. You know, um, 
I was I agree and I was surprised because um uh, of how physical how physical um the Bucks yeah. were yeah and the Bucks just looked you know they just out physical Kansas City Kansas City looked kind of almost lethargic yeah. at times you know and um and and so you know uh, that leads to, to to my next question um um what could Kansas City have done differently. And you know, and, and thinking about the fact that this is Andy Reid from the NFC East. Hardrick call him the NFC least now. I can't stand yeah. Hardrick talking about by talking yeah. about them. But the <laughs> NFC East that used to be really, you remember one time if a team came out the NFC, you know, oh, the, the AFC is in trouble. But and, and Andy Reid come out that physical environment, and one time Kansas City was a physical team like that. But, oh, yeah. Back um, in the days when they were um, when they had Hank, Hank Schramm as the head football coach, at that's when they had Olus Tato, uh, one of the uh, receiver. And there's always been Kansas City and, and Oakland that used to hook up against each other. That used to be the game. What could Kansas City have done different? Junior said, um, Hodrick Jr. said, he still love you, though. And Larry Larry Gibbs said, Coach Gooden. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Larry. <laughs> oh, Larry, Larry's a Tampa Bay fan, Coach. Okay. He's Tampa Bay, so he's on cloud nine right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he lived out there in Florida. But, but Coach, yeah, what could Kansas City have done differently? Well, I'm be honest with you, and I just found out today that uh, McHones was half injured. You know, he had a toe, toe, toe injury, plus he had a hamstring uh, problem also. But now, whenever you have a defense that is crushing your pocket, and if you notice la uh, the defensive linemen, I'm talking about Pierre Paul and, and Donovan Sue. Those guys were putting pressure on uh, McHolmes, and that pocket collapsed many times. And you notice when he was getting back deeper and deeper, that because he couldn't sprint out. And I didn't realize that today. It you know he couldn't sprint out simply because you know because of the injury. But now, if I was there, the only thing I would say when you're crushing the pocket, you have to sprint that quarterback out, get him out of there. And then with him being as fast as he was, then he would have been an extra threat to the outside. Then he can throw also short passes to the flat, curl routes. And then, you know, he can sprint out both left and right side. Mike Holmes is tough now. Yeah, he is. When the game first started, Actually, it looked like the toe injury got worse as the game wore on. Because yeah. I remember when he first started, the way he ran that ball around the corner, I was like, oh, I might have to take my prediction back. Right. He that corner. That first time, I was like, oh, I don't know. I said, he got around that corner kind of fast. But then as the game wore on, you know, you could see it. And then that one time, he took that cataclysmic hit. And those right. guys hit him. And I think three of them converged on him at one time. Right. He was, he was, he was done. Yeah. You could look at him and tell he was just basically like just done. Yeah. Yeah. They it's just kept the pressure on him and, and nothing they can do as far as like that defensive line. Like I say, it was crushing that offensive line. What can the quarterback do when he can't run? What the old man said, the barbershop, pressure bust pipes, right? <laughs> <That pressure. laughs> Every time. Right. <laughs> Every time. Right. <laughs> HP, you, Irvin was on here the other day, and Irvin, Irvin was adamant that you know Kansas City had need, needed to take it to a ground game. What do you think Kansas City could have did differently, um, HP, against um, that Tampa Bay team? Well, I mean, you got to look at it. their offensive line was depleted. I mean, they had three starters out. I mean, I don't think any quarterback would have played good on last Sunday. Any quarterback. I don't think Joe Montana, Tom Brady, or whoever would have played good. I mean, that was probably his worst game of his career. I mean, Patrick Mahomes, no touchdowns. And uh, I think they could have they could have ran the ball more, you know, where they had like under 10, 
under 10 carries. I mean, I think they could have ran it, you know, took a little pressure off of Mahomes, you know. They could have ran the ball more. But uh, like I said, there was no hope. I mean, Kansas, I mean, Kansas City, Andy Reid, I don't know. I mean, Andy Reid is a much better coach than that. I mean, he didn't make no adjustments in the second half. I mean, I was surprised. I mean, they had two weeks to prepare for Tampa Bay. I mean, there was no excuse. They got out coached and outplayed. And they lost. All right. Our next question is going to, uh, I'm going to field Larry Gibbs' statement. And I'm going to ask you on the next question. Uh, this is the next question, Coach. Larry Gibbs says that the Bucks are going to repeat this coming season. Coach, what do you think about that? Do you think that the Bucks can repeat? I tell you what, if if he can keep this squad together, out of all the teams, I think uh, Tampa Tampa Bay could 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 wind back up there next year. Uh, Kansas City got to do a little something about that uh, defense line. Also, the secondary. Uh, if you notice uh, with Kansas City. They win most of their games from that high power offense that they got. They normally outscored the other team. You know, when you're winning games, you know, 40 something points to 30, 38, you're talking about a, uh, an offense that scored 38 points against your, your, your defense, and you just have to have a good offense to outscore them. That's, 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 that's hurting Kansas City. So they're going to have to try to recruit some uh, secondary people. And some bigger defensive linemen. If they can get that defense right, they can uh, they can go. But right now, I don't see them going back next year. They'll be in the playoff, but uh, they won't win a Super Bowl. All right, coach. they won't be back to the Super Bowl. All right, Hodrick, what do you say about that? Um, well, I mean, I, I think they got a good chance. As long as you got Tom Brady, I mean. And he's healthy. You got a good chance. But uh, the salary cap issue, you know, some of them players going to have to restructure their contracts, you know, because uh, right now the receiver Goodwin, he's uh, he's about to have a big payday. Somebody's going to pay him $15 million a year. And uh, Tampa Bay can't probably can't afford that right now. So it's going to have to take some pay cuts. And as uh, far as I think they can get back there next year, but I don't think they'll win because, uh, like Patrick Mahomes said, we got motivation now. They should have had it before Sunday. Absolutely. I mean, don't get the motivation now when the season over with. Yeah. So they're, they're saying, like, well, we got something to play for next year. You should have played two days ago. Mm-hmm. So I think Tampa Bay has a chance to get there, but I don't see it on repeat. Okay. All right. And Junior Duncan, uh, I mean, I'll say, I'll tell that Larry says that uh, he hasn't thrown a touchdown against the Bucks in seven straight quarters. And he's talking about Mahomes. Um, Junior Duncan says um, it won't happen, LG. He said they won't go back. And then Larry says that um, uh, Mike Evans has already said <clears throat> he'll take a pay cut. And um, I just couldn't – I'd have to see them play next year because it's always that dark horse that rises. There was a lot of parity in the league this year, and um, I, couldn't, I couldn't crown uh, Tampa Bay uh, this early and say they're going to the Super Bowl next year, at least until I see them play. What impressed me about them this year, though, was um, going on the road and winning those games. Mm -hmm. And even though it's not, you know, those are usually some hostile environments to play in. But of course, it's not as bad as it was. But still, to not play, to play in New Orleans and, and then to go play in Green Bay right. and walk away with two wins, you know, um, they were they were pretty focused and they played pretty good ball. Um, Larry Gibbs, see, Larry Gibbs talking trash to me now. He says, the Cowboys is horrible, says my wife. Well, Larry, I'm not going to talk about your <laughs> wife because 
The Bible says when a man findeth the wife, he findeth the good thing. But since you my homeboy, I'm going to talk about you. Y'all on our schedule next year? Bro, let me tell you. Hey, I, I, Dak, will, Dak ankle will be all right next year. We'll be ready for you, baby. So and you know I could talk cash, money, trash all day long. So um, I'm going to remember what you said. And Ju Junior talks trash to her. Junior said, tell Junior to, to shush. So Junior said, Larry, you remember what Junior said? Junior, already told you tell Junior to shush. So, Coach, my next question is this. Um, I was a little surprised at, at Tyron Matthew. Being, uh, being a, um, uh, you know, being an all-pro, uh, being a veteran, and, and, and I know that you get tanked up in, in, for the game. Uh, do you think that he made some very critical er errors early on uh, with like going back and forth with Tom Brady that, that really hurt them um, in the long run? You can, you can say that, um, but uh, really I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. To me, Tampa Bay was hungry. You know they wanted they wanted to win. They want this win, just like you said when they went to uh, New Orleans, pull that out with the Green Bay, and then when they were you know came into the Super Bowl, they were the underdogs. You know, so to me, this was a basically a team, a team effort that want to win this. You know, want to win the Super Bowl, and then Brady had something that he want to prove also. You know, when he moved from uh, New England. A lot of people was questioning, was it the coach or was it Brady? <clears throat> but now, if you notice, Brady is actually a coach on that field. He is. So I think it's it's it's, it's a team thing. Yes, Not, sir. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Coach. HP, what do you think about that? You think Tyron Matthews um, made critical errors? Going back and forth with Brady. Of course. You never talk trash to Tom Brady. Nope. He lives for that. Especially the Super Bowl. You want to talk trash to Thomas, Edward, Patrick, Patrick, Brady, Jr. Did I get it right? <laughs> you got a lot of names. You, you don't talk lot trash to Tom Brady. In elementary school with that, I big, mean, that big pencil. If you talk trash to him, he's going to go after you. You know, to prove it, prove the point that you can't talk trash to me. And uh, like Coach said, Tampa Bay just wanted wanted it more. I mean, if you look at it now, Tampa Bay, if you look at this past season, they had some tough, real tough home games. I mean, every game they played at home, I wouldn't mind buying the tickets to go see. If you go go back and look at their schedule, and every game was a game that was worth paying for. Tough loss, yeah, yeah. So, Ty, it wasn't good for him to talk that trash. <laughs> but uh, like I say, Brady had like I say Brady wanted to prove, like like uh, Ba said that it wasn't just Belichick. It was more of me, Tom Brady. Yeah. So Brady proved that point that hey, it was me more than Coach Belichick. I'm not. But that. if you look at the previous Super Bowl, Belichick. hey, Belichick, 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 Belichick. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but if you look at it, I mean, football is a team sport, you know. Brady gets most all the credit, but. At the end of the day, it takes a team to win. So. All right. Okay, HP. HP, and, and, and so Larry Gibbs' wife now, she's off the chain. We ain't going to be able to deal with her. But I know for at least a year, at least till the Bucks get tore up in the first game of the season, coming up next year, whoever they play. When they lose again, um, she'll come back to earth. But. She says Dak won't be there. So she just tried to pour some salt on my wound, but that's all right. Then Larry says that uh, Coach Gooden is always right. Larry, you're right. 
Coach Gooden is always right. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, the, and, you know, to answer that, and, you know, my uh, opinion of the question, I asked that question because I don't know what Tyron Matthew said to him the second time. But right after that, Brady goes and he threads that needle to, um, to A.B., and after Brady spread thread the needle to A B, he walked over the tire. He walked over the tire mat and said something. So I don't know. It might have been he said, you know, I bet you won't throw on me, mm. you know, or something like that, because he threw the ball at him the very next, and that was a tight pass that he mm -hmm. threw. I didn't think A B caught it, as a matter of fact, but he threw a very tight pass, a very tight pass. So, coach, you know, you know, Colonel, I'm not cutting you off, but. Uh -huh. uh, as a coach, we always used to tell our players, don't say anything or do anything that will give them motivation. Now, I, like I said, I don't know what happened, but, uh, you know, that that can motivate a quarterback. Uh, I mean, or the whole team, you know, that had happened with us before. You know, I remember one time Stratford in high school. Put a black reef on our locker. Wow. <laughs> black reef. That means that it was going to kill us. <laughs> but really, that motivated us, you know. So don't, don't, don't do things like that when you know you got a better team. Because, like to say, on any given Sunday, you end up motivating someone, and they can put a weapon on you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Sure. And, and I think that you know what. If you look at some sports things that you look at some major events in sports that have happened, um, people have a tendency to make somebody a household name and then they'll look past the opponent. Like I remember, I still remember the morning that I got up and I used to bet on bust. I used to bet on Mike Tyson. I didn't even care who he was fighting. I used to bet on Mike Tyson and the Miami hurricanes all the time. Then I remember when I woke up that one Sunday morning, got the newspaper, and saw Tyson laying on the mat and Buster Douglas standing over him. I was like, I know Tyson didn't lose. And, and I had to pay up. I remember when the Miami Hurricanes came up. I mean, they were scoring like they were scoring lights out on everybody. They would score 50 points on your best team. And I remember right. when Gene Stallings came and Gene Stallings, the coach of Alabama in the national championship game. Put everybody up on the line. And I said, what is he doing? And he just had, I think Teague was a corner. I forget the other corner. But mm -hmm. he brought everybody up to the line and show blitz. And I said, well, Lamar Thomas is one of the wide receivers. I know they're not going to put no single coverage on Thomas all night long. Those two Alabama corners, mm -hmm. single coverage. And they were blitzing Gino Toretta. They blitzed and Miami had no answer for it, none. And that's how they beat. I mean, you remember that game? Yeah. Uh -huh. And so people were looking past them, the Rams. The mm -hmm. Rams used to have such a timed um, offense. Right. Um, I, I, you, you couldn't stop that Rams offense. Belichick or Belichito, whatever you call him, Hodrick, came, yeah. down there <laughs> with, with, uh, came down there with, with New England, and New yeah. England shut them down. UNLV yeah. against... The Duke, Duke Blue Devils. You remember that? You yeah, remember that? that game, so, yeah. I think sometimes people tend to look past um, mm -hmm. the opponent because the other one becomes a household name. You get so comfortable, you don't mm -hmm. think they can lose. Right, right. You, know, you don't think they can lose. And um, so, Coach, let me ask now. Gronkowski. Gronkowski got loose three times in that game. For three, three, very three, three, just um the two scores and then yeah, that one big play across the middle. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so and so um they took away on the other side of the ball, they took a uh, me and Hard we talked about it the other day on, on on the other show. They took Kelsey away from um completely out. And I knew yeah. if they took Kelsey out, I knew that was it. Cause um uh, Irvin said that why don't they hit him when he get ready to run his route? Why they always give him just he just goes right out right and that's what they was doing. They were sticking him on that line he, mm -hmm. and they put two corners over the top. So what should Andy Reid have drawn up against Gronkowski? 
What should he have done against Gronkowski on 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 Sunday? Well, you know Gronkowski, he's 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 a big big tight end. Plus, so he can you know wide out, and he's fast and strong also. You know, and if you look at a lot of those little cornerbacks that they have, you know, if you're gonna match up man, and you're gonna put one of those corners right there on on line, you you know, um, God gracious, uh, the only thing I can say. You would have to double team him, you know, have somebody hitting him on, you know, on the line and then also have a, a, a safety up top. But that would open up Evans. If you notice, Evans didn't do anything uh, Monday, uh, Sunday night. It was all what? Gunkowski, right? Yes, sir. That sounds crucial. Uh, but I think they were really maybe covering him. And then if you look at Kansas City side, you know, Kansas City used to have uh, three good receivers because uh, Watkins, uh, Sammy, Sammy didn't play. Matter of fact, Sammy didn't play in the last two games. So mm -hmm. if they if they double team Tariq Hill, the only person left was that other tight end. And Sammy Watkins, uh, you know, I don't know what he was injured or what, what, what whatever. But uh, that was another key play that hurt Kansas City, you know, um, when you have a quarterback who needs those receivers to get open. And see, Tyreek was a deep threat. Watkins was a deep threat. And then I will open up things for the tight end. Okay. And I think Gronskowski, he got open because, you know, the uh, the other wide receivers just, just open it up. I, I look at the patterns. It looked like Gronskowski would be open up. All the time, every time you look around, Brady has somebody open that he can throw it to. Whereas Kansas City, I didn't see it. Mm -hmm. Okay. HP, what do you think? What do you think? I, I'm not going to ask you that same question because Coach nailed it, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Coach, Coach nailed it. Coach, Coach nailed that question. Um, Especially when he said, like, uh, when you reroute and uh, safety over the top, I mean – that's great coverage right there. Because that's what we talked okay. about the other day. You remember we talked about the double yeah. coverage? Yeah. And, 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 mm -hmm. and, and, you know, um, we talked about that and talked about the double coverage. Larry Gibbs has chimed in. Larry says that it um, wasn't like Grunk was lighting, lighting things up. Actually didn't have good numbers coming into the game. But I guarantee you, y'all wasn't going to win nothing that without Grunk because Grunk scored 14 points. Sure and, and that, that big pass across the middle – that was the, yeah. that was the game breaker because it's like it broke their back. Um, yeah, but yeah, Gronk 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 knows how to score in mm -hmm. those in those type and 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 those the stage is not too big for him. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The stage Just like the Rams Super Bowl, the same thing. He was, you know, he was the key to that game. Yeah. The two stage two or three years ago. Yeah. The stage is not not too big for him. So now. Um, uh, um, you know, Cornell, I think also, you know, Grump just was open because the other guys were covered, you, you know. So when he looked deep, you're not open, then he's going to, you know, check check down, look down, and sure enough, Grump is, Grump is open. So you throw that ball to that open man. Mm -hmm. And then Larry Gibbs says that definitely his favorite target in big games. Yeah, Grump is his, Grump is his, is his Kelsey. <laughs> that's his Kelsey. You know, he's yep. been, yeah, that's his Kelsey. Yeah, if, Kelsey, if, if Kelsey's somehow, all right too. Now he's a good yeah, tight end yeah, now. Somehow, let me tell you, if somehow um Mahomes had got an opportunity to get to Kelsey, it seemed like to me, I, I saw Kelsey like almost single-handedly win some games. Oh. Mahomes was shuttle pass to him, you mm -hmm. know. And I was like yeah. saying to myself, you know, in the middle of everybody, he'll shuttle past them. But I think that Mahomes was he was hurt. And coach, let me ask this question because this is—I'll say this is Sabanistic. It's something that Nick Saban uh, would do. Um, uh, do you think that a Andy Reid should have started the backup? Not bad, or at some time, oh Mahomes um, in that Super Bowl game. You know, this is that this is the last game of the season. And uh, you always go with that thoroughbred, you know, uh, regardless if it hurt, you know, uh, you, you always go with your best. 
unless he can't go. And see, a lot of people didn't realize that he was that was that hurt. But uh, like you say, after the game go on, you you saw him start limping. So, but yeah. uh, I don't think I don't think he should have started. Uh, I think would have started uh, next games. I I would. HP, what do you think about that? Uh, pulling uh, Mahomes from the game? Yeah. No way, no how. <laughs> he said hey, he, later. If he could walk, he would have still been in the game. Right. If he could walk, but, he uh, could Like I said, it just – Tampa Bay just played great defense, man, you know. Right. What other quarterback could have done better, you know? I don't know. It was their day. Yeah, yeah their day. They wanted Larry it Gibb more. Larry Gibbs says, no. He says, no way. They, do you pull Patrick Mahomes? You keep Patrick Mahomes um, in the game. And so, uh, is Tom Brady, coach, the GOAT? Is he the greatest of all time? Well, I tell you what, if you look at the number of Super Bowls that he <laughs> that he won, <laughs> number of times he's been in a Super Bowl, and <laughs> – <laughs> You know, look at I look at Joe Montana. Uh, Joe Montana. Uh, he was a great quarterback. Uh, I look at Manning. Uh, Manning was a good quarterback, you know. But uh, you you got to win the big games also. And uh, if you look at it, old Brady been there and he win he win more Super Bowls, you know. And personally, you know. I don't look at him at, well, I guess, <laughs> don't, don't want to be prejudiced in anything, but you got to give the man credit. He is good. He's good. Yeah. 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 So, absolutely. Uh, he'll get my vote. Okay. Uh, let's hear what Hardrick has to say. Hardrick? Well. It is, it is Tom Brady <laughs> the greatest of all time coach? You see a rocket, he rocking, he doing dirt. That's a lot of nervous energy. Was it hard to say? All time. <laughs> I don't think he's a goat. What I think he's the glat. <laughs> What's the glat, Hardrick? That's the greatest leader of all time on the football field. Oh, so you call him the greatest leader of all time? On Leadership. The all right. Okay. He's a great leader. And he took that leadership from the Patriots and brought it to the Buccaneers. And it took less than one NFL season because there was no preseason. There were no OTAs. It would just go for it. Okay. And he changed Tampa Bay's offense, too. Yeah, yeah. You know, it had been Tom's offense. Now, we can give uh, B.A. and uh, offensive coordinator, you know, but if you look at it, that was Tom's offense. And he brought leadership on the other side of the ball, too. Leadership. Yeah. You know, yep. so he's the greatest leader of all time on the football field. But I would say he's the, the GOAT. He's the GLAT. <laughs> well, Hodge, he ain't throwing no ball with his leadership. He's throwing his, the ball with his arm. Yeah. But you said, but look, 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 at, look at his stats, CJ. Look, go through all 10 Super Bowls and look at his stats. Half the Super Bowl, the opposing quarterback had better stats than Tom Brady. Yeah, but if you ain't walking away with the hardware, you can't. Yeah. You ain't, hey, you can't hold the stats up at the end of the game. I, I don't care if he. I don't care if he's if he's uh one for twelve and a hundred yards. You know, I, I don't. If he walking away as the winner, then stats really don't matter. Yeah, but it took it took uh the defense. It takes special teams. So if Tampa Bay didn't play that great on defense, did you think they could have won that game? 
Well, I said the other well, day. What Brady just did. I said the other day, like we were saying, it was a concerted effort. And remember I said Tampa Bay has to play lights out defense, and they did. And I didn't even know about Tampa Bay's coaching staff, really, because I don't follow any other football other than Dallas Cowboy football, because why should I? But anyway, uh, that's another uh, matter. We're not talking about that today. But, um, uh, yeah, when I saw who their coaching staff was, they got a deep coaching staff. Yeah, that defense they, coordinator that they that got. That defense the coordinator, game. Todd Bowles? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They got a deep coaching staff. Hey, um, Larry says – Let's not forget that Tom Brady was drafted in the sixth round. Um, Larry also says he definitely changed the atmosphere in the locker room. And um, Larry said, wow. Uh, I guess Larry said, wow, either about you, me talking about the Dallas Cowboys, or you talking about Tom Brady's not the greatest of all time. But let me tell you, Hodrick, um, I've never been a Tom Brady fan. I want you to know that. I haven't. Uh, you know I had a deep dislike and disdain make me use a word I don't use all the time for the um the Patriots when my cousin Derek um Rivers went to the Patriots. Well, I had to start liking the Patriots, but even coaches I don't like, and I don't like Green Bay because I don't like the fact that uh you know it's personal reasons, but I can't I can't negate the fact when somebody is good and they execute, and Tom Brady executes. Yeah. Sunday, he executed, man, at, at the highest level. And this dude, he's not no young guy. He ain't no mm -hmm. spring chicken, you know, but he executed at the highest level. Um, and that's why I really got to give him what he earned, man. I got to call him the greatest of all time because at that age that he's at now, he got out there and they did what you said, do. You said that they had to keep him upright. Mm -hmm. Hey, they only, they only um, sack him one time. But mm -hmm. if you give him time, he'll cut your throat. There's some quarterbacks that you can give them all the time in the world and they go throw interception. <laughs> but but, but we, make it, we, we tend to make it like Tom Brady is the only player on the football field, which he isn't. I mean, quarterback, somehow the quarterback gets majority of the credit. I don't care how good they play or bad they play, but if they win, they get most of the credit. <laughs> Well, you know, like I said earlier, uh, Pennell, you know, Tom Brady always had a good offensive line that would block for him and give him time. And if you notice, most of the game, well, not most of the game, a lot of the games when New England was behind, less than two minutes left in the game, they don't want that, that New England offense back on the field because for some reason, Brady found a way to win. Mm -hmm. And y'all, you know, you know, there was many games he, you know, he came from behind. You know, the guy knew. I mean, he knows football. Now he's not a running quarterback, but you know, he's a pocket quarterback. And then if you're a pocket quarterback, you got to have that offensive line that can block. And mm -hmm. uh, when he came down to Tampa Bay, for some reason, he got that offensive line straight. He did the job. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely, yep. Coach. Coach, we, we got another one of your pupils, Coach. We got Michael Bryant. He chimed Mike. in from the road. You see your Mike down there? <laughs> hey, Mike. Coach Good, how you doing? I'm, I'm doing great. Enjoying uh, retirement. I want you guys to keep working so I can get my social security. <laughs> <laughs> we, hey, we, we, we trying. We trying. <laughs> hey, Coach. <laughs> I use it. I, I I tell I tell everyone the story when we played JV and 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 Buford blew blew us out that day that night, and we came back home and we was we was giggling and laughing. I mean, we thought you thought that we did some. Matter of fact, I think we won that year. I think we probably won one game, and I'm I'm thinking. Oh. Yeah. And man, Coach Coach Watson said, "Stop the bus! Stop the bus!" And stopped the bus. We having a good time. And Coach Watson said, "I ain't never seen a bunch of happy losers." And man, <laughs> I remember that, Mike. You remember I was, that? I was driving the bus. Yeah. <laughs> that old stag bus on JV. I used to have to drive that, and Verbal had the little mini bus. 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, and I remember man. when y'all beat Walter, bro, y'all got on the bus bagging up. We number one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's what happened when hey, that's what happened when you only win one game. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! I know Coach Watson has said oh. something about that too. Yeah, no. but we number one in it. But what? Yeah, I love sir. Coach Watson. That hey, uh, hey, Coach Gooden, Junior Duncan. I don't know what happened to Junior the last couple minutes. He must be frying some fish or something because he ain't said nothing. <laughs> but Junior Duncan, we used to coach. Used to love Junior, and so we play a little intramural sports. We were playing flag football. Junior tackled me and took my flag off. And so I got up and I told Coach, I said, man, Coach, you ain't see Junior tackle me? Coach said, be a darn man. (laughs) (laughs) Coach Watson. (laughs) Well, you know, he was my fishing partner also after he retired. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Junior saw both of us down there sometimes. (laughs) In the rice field. <laughs> so Larry said, uh, Larry said, um, I hated I hated Tom Brady until March of 2020. That's when he became a okay. tap buccaneer. Larry called you Mr. Conspiracy Mike. He's talking trash to you when you came in. <laughs> um, Larry says, Now I understand your love for the cowboys, Mike. Larry, listen, don't be talking about the cowboys just because Tampa Bay won the Super Bowl. Cause bro, y'all gotta play us next year. Hey, look, I that's a good thing. Larry, I like I it. said, Larry, Larry is the original Buffalo Bills fan. I know he's a fan. Um, and the only reason why he's a Tampa Bay fan because he got to make peace in his house because his wife is it. If 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 Julia was not a look, if Julia was not Tampa Bay, he wouldn't be pulling for Tampa Bay. But look, he got to walk around them people, man. He gotta walk around the people, so he better act like he know. He better act. He got. He better act. And Junior Duncan said, "I'm still hair corns," so he's probably laughing because he remember. And you know what else he did, Junior? And let me tell you what else he did. Oh, he asked. He said, "Ask them about the kickoff." Oh, the kickoff, Junior. Uh, about the kickoff corns. Kickoff. I don't know. I oh, I'll tell you what though. We were playing um soccer. And Junior had these big, these big boots on. And so I was the goalie because I wasn't gonna run up and down that field the whole time. So we had Emery Lord on our team and everything. Junior came down to try to score a goal. He kicked me with his boots. And then he scored the goal. I said, Coach, man, I know you see Junior kick me, man, and score that goal. Coach said, be a darn man. I mean, Coach used to hold it up before. He used to hold it up. I love Coach Watson. I love him. Mike. So we've been talking about the game and, and everything, and um, you know we had a pretty good uh, we had a pretty good discussion. We're so thankful to have Coach with us, man. We ain't gonna yeah, keep yes, coaching all night, but yes, I, I'm, I'm gonna ask you, man. Um, you know, um, what was and this is the next question, in in, in your in, in you know in in your synopsis, the way you see it, what was the critical mistake that 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 um Kansas City made? When was when was it the backbreaker? When you knew they couldn't come back in this game? You know, I, I, I don't I don't think honestly looking at the whole makeup of the game, honestly, I don't I don't think it was I think it was several things. I mean that Kansas City and, and I know I've heard that, you know, this Tampa Bay just was really part of good execution as far as um dealing with KC, but I don't know. It just seemed like they was out of it, man. Like, like they never really got into it. Period. I mean, I, I mean, they was having their way with them. And the thing that really bothered me is, I always said Mahone is a smart quarterback, but the way that Mahone was playing, Mahone was playing, he, he almost act like he was a rookie. Like some of the things that he was doing to me just didn't make no sense. Like he's in the grasp of a defensive. Uh, uh, player and they swinging him round and round. And he just throwing the ball like, who's supposed to catch the ball? Like, they was just out of it. I don't think it was one one thing. Is like they never could actually get started. Never, never. Mm-hmm. That's that. 
that's the way I look. Cause when you you see them all year long, and um and 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 now basically, uh, and seeing them playing, it's just like to me now. It just seemed like there was a total different team. Larry Gibbs says that's what happens when you get punched in the mouth early. So Larry, Larry's using that Mike Tyson um philosophy. Mike Tyson said everybody has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. So that's what Larry I'm, said. I'm yeah. laughing at Junior because I'm not putting up what Junior said because Junior always antagonizing me during my show. I'm not messing with Junior Duck in the day. <laughs> Uh, but 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 and that that just leads to that, that leads to um to this question um uh Mike you think Tom Brady is the greatest of all time? I mean his record shows that. I mean he is. I you know he got some question marks for me. But I mean at the at, at the end at the end of the day you you know those question marks you can't you can't erase them. I mean it's it's all about the record when you. When you start comparing his record and what he did, yeah, he is the best of all times. Now, did he have some help getting there? That could be another show. But uh, <laughs> a lot of but, help. But 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 it is what it is, and, and until you can beat that record, you know, it may be a hard uh, pill to swallow. You know, even Larry said he couldn't stand him until he went to Tampa, which yeah. kind of shows you, like. If he goes to Dallas or any place that he goes that, that he, he, he wins the Super Bowl, he's going to be the best ever. But, you know, um, we done seen some of them Super Bowls. We done kind of seen certain things that happen. But, like I said, it's his record, and you can't you can't argue that. As the older people say, you can't argue that. So you can't it, argue. It, it, you need to argue about it, right? <laughs> you need to argue about it, yeah. Sure. Hey, and so listen to what listen, you know, Larry getting on my nerve, bro. I'm gonna tell you, Larry getting on my nerve. Mike loves Roger Starback, Danny White, and Tony Romo. These cats gonna get off the Dallas Cowboys. Cause you you getting no, off the Dallas Cowboys, no, Larry. No, hey, tell my love Jim. I love Jim Kelly. That's who I really love. Now I, I can't say that because you know I love Kelly because Kelly was Miami Hurricanes quarterback. Kelly yeah, was a bad not. man. But we I'm used talking to about, I'm talking about, no, I'm talking about back in the days, Jim Kelly, when he played for Buffalo. That's who I well, listen, love. He was bad then, but this is my next question. So I see Larry is here. So this is my next question. I'm a, this uh we're gonna pull out the dominant defenses now. Those Ravens, those Steelers, <clears throat> those Dallas Cowboys from the 90s. Does this Tampa Bay team rate with those teams? Mm. Mm. Those Philadelphia Eagles, not in the Super Bowl, but we had to face every year. Those Giants, uh, the other Tampa Bay team with Warren Sapp. Does this Tampa Bay team rate with those teams? Let me see what kind of lie he gonna tell. He gonna talk about Larry boy. You see what Larry said? Mm. I, I don't think best. so. I don't think so. That is just two thousand bucks. I, I I beg to differ. I beg to differ. I I I don't see. I I, I say that this Tampa Bay team was was dominant, more dominant than that Kansas City team. But when you talk about those lights out defenses. Um, because the Ravens really didn't even have a, a, a good offense. They had Flacco, you remember? Mm -hmm. They had Flacco, but yeah. that Ravens defense. And uh the previous Super Bowl. Ooh. I can't even think of the quarterback's name. <laughs> like yeah, in 2000, I believe. Yeah. Now Ray <laughs> Lewis and two. No, I can't compare that defense to, uh, you know, I can't. Oh, Junior Duncan said Chicago they're, they're Bears. They're probably being the top yeah, 10. Chicago but. Bears is 1-2, Junior. Chicago Bears had that lights out defense. 85. Mm -hmm. 85. And Larry, That's what I'm about to say, Junior. Yeah, and then Larry says, you better check the roster loaded with Hall of Famers. 
And Larry says Brad Johnson. So, Larry, we can start calling some names from those teams we just named. Mike Singletary, Chicago, right. Dallas Cowboys, Dixon Edwards, Godfrey Miles, world-class speed linebackers that changed the whole complexion of the football game. But I, I can't take away Tampa Bay as the champion now, but but uh, uh, compared to the, to the football that we've seen, that we've seen, I mean, even the even the um, halftime show, um, you know, he definitely ain't been Luther, and he sure wasn't Prince. I do like one of his songs, though. It made me feel like I was in the asylum. Coach, what you think about that halftime show? Is that Al Green? Uh, that I, didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't care too much about it, though. <laughs> Yeah, I think got me something to eat. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, I didn't even actually watch the halftime show. <laughs> didn't even see it. Okay. I like one of his shows now. I what one of his songs though. Mike wait, Larry says he agree about that. He agree about the halftime show, the music. Yeah, he agree about the halftime show. So, um, yeah, um, so you know, I I think that um. Football has evolved. It's changed. You know, we saw a lot of tackling miss, but I, I, I just like I, I was, I said that to say this um, is that, um, you know, they executed at the top of the game Sunday. I can't take that away from them. They, yeah, yeah. they had an awesome game plan and they are the world champions. But um, uh, we asked earlier, Mike, um, do, do you think that they're going to repeat next year? And um, I think everybody here agreed. No. No, coach, coach, you said you didn't. You didn't see them repeating next year, right? No, if they can't, if they can keep their players together. But now, when you're talking, talking about money, and then you also got to look at Gronkowski, those guys, him and Brown. You know, they came back this year, did just one year contract, and I, hopefully, you know, <clears throat> they will hold on to those guys. I'm not a Tampa Bay fan now. I'm going to tell you, Carnell, I'm a New York Giants fan, but... <laughs> no, Coach, say it's not so! This, 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 NFC, this NFC East with Dallas... The NFC East, though. <laughs> we didn't do anything this year. <laughs> yeah, you know, my dad is a big Redskin fan. But listen, you know that. Man, we catch all... Listen, I, I was dodging him the whole season. Especially okay. when I sweep by Washington this year, I did yeah. not want to see my daddy boy. Hey, I know he's looking for me though. Every time I pass by his house in Matt Beth, I have my head turned to the side a little bit because he likes to sit on that porch sometime. But I know he's looking for me. He's looking for me definitely. But um, <laughs> yeah, Mike, what do you think? You think they're gonna repeat? No, no, they're not. They, they're not. They're not going to repeat. Um, and and, and you know when you kind of going off and coming back in like you, when you start talking about um the defensive the defenses that actually like control the game it kind of goes back to what coach was saying like back then those defense those teams stayed together um and there wasn't all that like you you can have a dominant team like college basketball we talked about that the other day you can have a dominant team now you better do what you got to do because next year most of those guys are gone. So the way that free agency is right now, whatever you got right now, you know, um, whatever you whatever you got, you better hold you better go ahead and do what you got to do because um NFL actually stands not for long because they ain't sticking around if they ain't got the money. So um I don't look for them and let's be honest with you. I don't I, I didn't think they was going to the Super Bowl this year. I mean when Brady, when Brady, and, and, and a lot of Tampa Bay fans don't want to say this, like last year, I can say that Buffalo was like more of a team that I said was under the radar. Like they was coming up. Miami was coming up. And no one could actually say that Tampa was that team mm -hmm. until Tom Brady came down. And when Tom Brady came down, everybody followed him down. If Tom Brady retires or whatever he's going to do, Tampa's going to be right back to where they was. Mm -hmm. Straight up. But, Mike, you got to realize, as soon as they signed Brady, they were Super Bowl contenders. Absolutely. The minute they signed them, they were automatically Super Bowl contenders. Absolutely. 
And I actually pick I actually pick an all Florida Super Bowl. I actually put Miami and Tampa Bay. I knew Miami was unrealistic, but I'm glad you knew that Bay would have a chance. I'm glad you knew that. I'm glad you knew. Only way that the fish ain't been going nowhere, Hardrick. I could talk trash now, but you know, they they played good this year. Listen, so Junior's been antagonizing me, you know, him and Larry teaming up, which is very, very strange for him and Larry to team up in the chat. So Junior says, Can you tell Corns that 99% of the time the team that wins the coin toss defers to the second half? And I told Junior, I've seen people take the coin co- take the coin toss. Um, you know, I, I've seen that offenses. Take the coin toss if they wanted to, to score first. But Junior says 99%. So what do you guys say? He said 99% of the time, the team that wins the toss, the coin toss, the first to the second half. I never paid any attention to that, but um, you know, he's you know, it might be right. But yeah. I also noticed that the 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 underdogs. You know, whoever be the underdog in the Super Bowl, for some reason, that give them the motivation that, you know, to, to, to play harder. You know, and I didn't like the idea when they give Kansas City, you know, the, the top dog and, and uh, Brady knows the underdog, you know. I, I thought it was going to be a better game, but they, watch how that defensive line that Tampa Bay had, how they dominate. What was the score? 31 9? 31 and 9. Mm-hmm. 31 and 9. I said 34 to 20. That's what I called yeah, the last yeah. one. I said 34 to 20. Well, but Tyreek had one in his hand, but it, yeah. well, it, it came through his hand and hit him on the helmet and bounced off. But the, he had a defensive back that distracted him on that. But they just couldn't get the passing game going. And see, a lot of times, you know, in, in football, the passing game can open up the running game and vice versa. The running game can open up the passing game. But now when they shut down Kansas City passing game, and you know there wasn't that strong in, in running the ball from the beginning, that was, mm-hmm. that was just it. All right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And um, <clears throat> chiming in, um, we had um, Julia, Larry Gibbs' wife, Julia Gibbs. She says, yes, there will be a repeat. You know, she's <laughs> feeling good over there. Um, out, there out there in Tampa, Florida, all that sunshine. I can't stand them people in Florida. You know, they can wear short pants this time of the year. Um, Junior, Junior Duncan says, shush, Julia. Uh, Junior Duncan said, there goes Hardy again. So Junior and Hardy back at war again. And um, Junior Duncan says in overtime, so he's talking about uh, the deferred pass. So, Junior, I asked your question. And um, and so we're going to do our final thoughts, man. You know, we had Coach with us for a while. I ain't going to keep Coach hanging out too long with us. Yeah, my yeah. stomach is growling now. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want your stomach to growl, Coach. Coach, coach you got to eat before 8, 8 p.m. now. <laughs> made, me, made me miss my news. No, coach, I'm sorry, coach. I'm sorry, coach. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, coach. You got any final thoughts you want to share with us about about you know? I mean, just taking a stab in there. Who do you think may be there next year? Don't have to be accurate, you know. Well, uh, uh, yeah, I, I know that you know, and uh, I I just hope my team will be there next year. The Giants. I guess you'd be hoping to Dallas. <laughs> I don't foresee that right now. <laughs> but uh, you can't you can't uh, put Seattle out. Uh, uh, I was listening to, to the news today with on uh, an NFL channel. You know they're trying to get uh, the quarterback to do a little help in recruiting. Uh, what's the quarterback there at um, Seattle? Yeah, um, uh, Russell, 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 Russell Wilson. Russell, Russell Wilson, mm-hmm. you, you, you know, because uh, he almost like a franchise there now, you know, um, just like Tom Brady was the franchise right there at New England, and looked like he's going to be there at the Buccaneers also. But um, I, I think uh, you can't count uh, Green Bay. 
And then on the uh, EFC, we know that uh, Kansas City is going to be back. Then you're going to have to look at those uh, Ravens. Baltimore, I, I think they got a good good team if they can put things together. Okay. All right. <clears throat> HP, what do you think? Um, well, I have to say, uh, I got a toss up. Uh, the 49ers, I think, uh, they're gonna get most of their defense back. You know, they was injured all year, and uh, I think if they can get Deshaun Watson in a trade, I look for it between the NFC between the 49ers and Tampa Bay. If 49ers can't get that quarterback, uh, I like the Rams. I like the Rams and Tampa Bay for my NFC championship next year. And for the AFC, I mean, I got to go back with Kansas City. I mean, until Lamar Jackson can throw the ball accurately, I don't see the Ravens challenging the Chiefs. I don't see the Bills either. So yeah, Larry Larry Gibbs said the Bills, but I think he's talking about the light bill and the water <laughs> bill. I hear you talking no, about I the Bills. Uh, I mean, as long as you got light light bill, bill, bill. Is healthy, if he can get his offensive line back, which will, and I see them repeat next year as AFC champions. Okay. And Larry said Josh Allen. The Bills did have a good year. They had a good season this, this yeah, season. They did. Um, so you know. if I had to pick right now, I'll say KC and Tampa Bay. Repeat. KC and Tampa Bay repeat. But it will be a different result it. next time. I, I don't see it. I, well, you know, just like Coach said the Giants, I'm going to say the Cowboys. I'm going to say <laughs> we get dead back up. And I'm going to say we face the AFC team. We go give them something, boy, because we go have something to run. We got some new, uh, new offensive linemen. We'll be running that ball next year. I, I wish because there was no real. I mean, Fournette ran that ball. Fournette yeah. ran that ball. He he ran that ball, man. It's yeah. like he was really physical. He ran that ball, and um, and so yeah, absolutely. Um, I have to see the Cowboys and and and, and Kansas City. I'll go ahead and I, I'll anoint Kansas City to go back. Yeah, I'll, I'll anoint them to go back if, if they. But you know, yeah, the Cowboys in Kansas City. That's right. You can't, hey, because uh, they're gonna be in LA next year, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. They, they, they just built a new, uh, a new uh, super dome over there in LA. So they're gonna they're gonna have it there next year. So and now I'm gonna be Cowboys. honest with you now. I'm Cowboys. <laughs> Jerry Jones gonna have to gonna have to keep his nose out and, and let the coach, you know, do the coaching. And uh, yeah, that's the problem we got, yeah. you know. Yeah, since Jimmy Johnson's been gone, I I call it the curse of Jimmy Johnson. That's what it is. They got a curse. An old gypsy woman uh, was there, <laughs> and when Jimmy Johnson walked out, she said, "And you are never." Never go to another Super Bowl until you put Jimmy Johnson in the Ring of Honor. You know that yeah. crazy man still won't put Jimmy Johnson in the Ring of Honor. He's still mad. Jerry Jones is a nut. He's he a nut. That's two, like he won two Super Bowls for Dallas, right? Man, listen. If and and Larry says we need a a a, a new GM, we got a GM. Our GM name is Will. Um, what's Will's last name? Uh, Madonna or something like that. I can't remember his last name. That's the dude that picks all the talent. That the guy that they he's not the at Dallas, he picks all the talent. Um, uh, we they went ahead and got McCarthy, they got him from pick and pay because um they couldn't find a real coach, so they got McCarthy. Then McCarthy bring in a quarterback. What's the boy name? How did we talk about him the other day? That boy couldn't throw a he couldn't throw a brick at a, a bomb a red bomb wall. They came in and played the game last year. Um, he was so sorry. Oh, yeah, I can't think of they waste a whole draft pick on that guy. A whole oh, draft man. pick. And Larry said, What talent? Larry, don't get beside yourself now. Don't <laughs> get beside yourself. Because, bro, listen, I'm going to tell you, y'all were, y'all, y'all turned the corner on the Super Bowl, your defense. But believe me, bro, without that Tom Brady and to, to Gronkowski, we're going to take 14 points off the board. 
y'all still win. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, how would your quarterback or your other quarterback or whoever was your quarterback, how would he have done with the, with the Kansas City pressure? Would he have been cool as Tom Brady? So would he have been able to sit back there and thread the needle like Tom Brady? So Junior Duncan agreed with you, Coach. He said, absolutely, Coach. And I ain't going to let y'all wear Coach out because me and Coach go to the same barbershop. Coach ain't going to go there and tell Mackie a buddy was on my show and I didn't know when to stop talking. So we ain't, I ain't going to let y'all wear Coach out today. Nobody yeah. messes with y'all. And then Larry Gibbs said, you overpaid your best player and he ain't hungry no more. And that happens yep. a lot of times. Players get overpaid. They get overpaid and they ain't hungry You're right. No yeah. yeah. And, and, and Larry, Mark Cooper. Mm -hmm. Fournette was a good pickup, but now you know Fournette is fat. He got a Super Bowl ring, so let's see how y'all deal with your players next year. So you know, I don't forget nothing, Larry. I'll be able to look back at this show, and, and so I look back at this show, and so yeah, that happens. They get demotivated when they get that money. But hey, we're so glad to have you with us tonight, Coach Gooden. We're gonna give you that applause one more time. Huh? The great Coach John Gooden. I'm going to stop holding him off his collard greens or okra or whatever he got over there. Right, I'm right. Him off that. We're yeah. glad to have you with us. Thank you, Coach. We'll have you Appreciate back. You, Appreciate right. you. Coach. Listen, it was good seeing all of you guys. Hi, God, Lee, I haven't seen in quite a while, man. You oh, know, yeah. That's just the day you came by the house. Yes, How sir. Years ago, that was about five. About five years ago. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, I see him in the, in the barbershop every now and then, Cornell. Yeah, I see us at the barbershop every yeah, now and then. I saw yeah. a picture of, uh, of, of um, Irvin Seabrooks and uh, Bethereal. Yeah, Bethereal, Bethereal was supposed to come in. He didn't get a chance to. Irvin Seabrook couldn't be with us tonight. Um, okay. or Irv. So I'll tell you what, we'll definitely have you back when Irv is going to be on. And we'll just have us a, like a, a football talk. You know, we'll come on before the season come back in or something like that. Cause you know, I don't have nothing to do till football season come back in. So I don't well, know. Make sure y'all do that before my dinner. Okay. Yeah. Coach, uh, we'll get you earlier in the day next time. <laughs> all right. Yeah, then. Listen, <laughs> listen, I got to deal, I, I deal with your daughter now. She going to talk trash. Y'all had daddy on here too long. <laughs> hey, Cornell. Huh? Uh -huh. <laughs> we should have included coach when we talked about the, uh, like the Berkeley High School, you know, football players all time and all that. Uh -huh. Yeah, coach, we're gonna do that next time because we had a show on Berkeley High School players, and um, we'll get we'll get um, Doug was gonna try to get it tonight. He couldn't get there, but we'll get Doug and Ryan and see. I'll tell them boys, coach could be on the show. That'll pull them in. Yeah, yeah, that'll well, pull them in. Stay, I'm not gonna sit too long. <laughs> Like I did tonight, all right? <laughs> no, Coach. We're going to keep you locked. Coach, go <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate you, Coach. We appreciate you, Coach. We were glad to have Coach Larry Gibbs said great show. Thank you, Larry, for your Thank participation. You, Man, y'all made the show great. Junior Duncan said you ain't miss nothing. <laughs> and, oh, Junior Duncan crack it on me, boy. He said I'd be in London. Be in London, corn. Because I told him something, man. And I shouldn't have told you, you know, like certain things you can't tell certain people. I must have told Junior and, and, and um and, and Michael Bryan something, but yeah, man, we were just glad to have everybody on our show tonight and glad for all of you. AHP, appreciate you um supporting me the way you do all the time, bro. No problem. Give it up for HP you, West and South you know, Carolina. I'm always 100%, bro. I know that, bro. Give it up for HP. And we give it up for all of you. Until next time, this is the Moral Compass. We'll be seeing you guys soon.